Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for March 2nd, 2022. Well, my goodness, um, yesterday we had those bears re-engage and they got a little bit feisty yesterday as those oil prices surged above $105 a barrel and just the uncertainty out there that that creates. What's interesting this morning is we're ignoring the fact that oil is surging again. We are currently above $103 a barrel and the market is trying to display bullishness this morning. So what does that mean for today? Well, how about we settle in, let's buckle up. Let's get ready for the Wednesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone. Thanks so much for being here today. I do truly appreciate it. Boy, we have a dangerous market condition with these big intraday whipsaws. Um, all of this, all, we're moving tons and tons of points, just chopping around and I fear uh, from what I hear from um, other traders out there that they're having their accounts kind of beat up pretty heavily in these wild gyrations. Let's take a look at these charts and see if we can gain some information about how we may want to approach the market today. And I got to tell you, um, it's it's a rough, a rough condition to trade in with these big price swings. Um, we continue to maintain this downtrend here in the diamonds. And we have seen lots of volatility in this area right here, noticing that we, we've tried several times to push up through this resistance level in the chart. And so far that resistance continues to hold pretty solidly here. We've tried and tried and tried. We keep banging our head against it. Just can't quite get up through there. Now, does that mean that we're actually settling in to more of a choppy range bound situation here in the market? Or does that mean we will eventually push up through here and finally be able to break in to that next level, even though we still have the downtrend in play? Or will we continue to try and keep seeing those bears bang us back down in these big 500, 600 point swings in the market? And unfortunately, some, we're seeing some of that intraday in these big whipsaws. So I suspect that is going to continue. And as we continue to see the uncertainty unfolding over there in the Ukraine, that is likely to continue. Um, we see Russia continuing to um, advance um, on the people of Ukraine and the country surrounding cities and creating an awful lot of uncertainty over there and certainly a lot of sensitivity to the markets on the news cycle. So kind of keep a close eye on that. I think anything is possible um, in uh, throughout these days um, with all of this uncertainty. And um, let's keep in mind that if we can get those bulls moving and if we can push through this level of resistance there's just huge levels of resistance above in the chart and our technicals are not improving here yet notice our 50-day moving average is coming uh, very very close to our 200 day and that likelihood that it will cross down here soon if we take a look at our spy very much the same a um, lot of uncertainty in the volatility one good sign here though is that we've been able to hold on to this price support so we're locked in this price range with substantial price resistance above and um, a little bit of support here below and just that uncertainty of these whipsaws and where we will actually remain in those charts. Take a look, we have um, this downtrend in play, um, also creating just a bit of angst um, here in the market. Can we push on through or will we see those bears um, continue to show their teeth um, in this market. Uncertain here for sure. And those technicals in the charts, um, that 50 day moving average, uh, SPY has enjoyed the fact that the 50 was quite a bit elevated above the 200, but that is really changing here quickly. As you can see with that 34 EMA, 20 EMA now crossing down through the 200 day and that 50 is diving down that direction pretty quickly. So we're gonna need something special to really push up through these major levels of price resistance in the chart. And then if we take a look at our 
QQQ. QQQ really struggling here. Now, the good news is that we did um, yesterday, even with the selling, held on to that price support in that area. But I wanted to make note, want you to make note of these massive levels of resistance above in the chart. Downtrend still in play here in the QQQ. So perhaps we're consolidating this move out here sideways toward that trend. Maybe if we can get those bulls going in here, we can test this level of resistance and try to push through. But if those bears re-engage, I think the the predominant um, um, trend here in the market is obviously down, and um, that makes it pretty tough for me to look at this chart in any bullish fashion um, at the moment. And the technicals in this chart are dismal. 50-day uh, moving average, making that cross down through the 200-day moving average. Certainly, we could catch that oversold condition with just a little bit of a bounce, but I'll show you that there is still some uncertainty even in that in just a few moments let's take a look at our russell um iwm uh, rallying up pretty nicely off of this little double bottom area that we've created in the chart but once again still challenged by resistance above and unfortunately we have a year's worth of resistance above that if we can happen to push through and our technicals here remain pretty dismal notice that the 50-day moving average has come down hard we're going to be placing kind of a lid on um, the market right here with that 50-day so watch that closely if we take a look at our VIX. Our VIX is showing us that fear. And I got to tell you guys, one of the things you want to be paying attention to, if we pop up in into these areas up in here um, on that fear level, we kind of start a cycle where um, you'll see um, automatic selling um, that can begin to happen. It's happened for years and years and years, and it's it's really because of um, the expansion of the volatility products in the market. Um, I think it could be worse this time if we jump up into that area. So we need to see um, that fear stay settled down and hold on to this resistance in the chart. But unfortunately, as you can see, we continue to push in these uptrending moves closing the day at 33 handles here and even with the rest or pullback we've got a lot of work here before we start breaking back down below this 25 area of support in the chart so even with this rally that we're seeing potentially this morning um, i'm not sure that's going to improve this situation um in here particularly as russia continues to tighten its grip on the ukraine so watch that carefully and if we take a look at our t2122 this is what i was talking about just that uncertainty um here in t2122 remember t2122 doesn't tell us which way the market's going to go it shows us those pressure points in the market and we've seen a lot of that where we've whipped from oversold to overbought and we just continue this seesaw in the market if you wonder why you've been challenged um, in the price action of the chart well that's exactly why we're either racing in in wild speculation buying or we're running for the doors in panic and if you take a look at where we ended up the day yesterday, we had pushed up actually right in here to this bearish reversal zone um, yesterday. And um, obviously that selling yesterday brought us back down to the mid range. So what does that mean? Well, that means we kind of have an equal weighting here um, on opportunity. If we can find reason for those bulls to grab a hold, we've opened up some opportunity for that upside. But if those bears um, find reason to grab a hold, um, we certainly have more downside here in the market possible. So just watch those things closely. A um, lot of uncertainty here as to what comes next. If you take a look at our T2108, T2108 is the percentage of stocks above the 40-day moving average. And as you can see, we pulled back a bit on that yesterday. But 
obviously not as bad as you might have uh, thought with the pressure that we saw in the market. So there is still some hope here that we are trying to marginally improve um, in the market. But notice that downtrend still in play. We still have considerable resistance levels above. So uh, pretty hard to say with just 30% of the stocks above their 40-day moving average. This is a bullish condition. What I would continue to say is this is a dangerous market condition. T2107 continues to show that here in the market, pushing down pretty sharply yesterday, 27, 28% of the stocks holding above their 200 day moving average. And you can see lots of resistance above that still needs to be breached um, as well as a major downtrend. So lots of pressures here. Um, again, can't really call that a bullish condition here for the market. If we take a look at our T2101, I do think T2101 is a little bit um, a little bit interesting in the fact that we sank back down here in that T2101, which kind of tells me that we're setting up for another big move. And I don't know if that big move is going to be to the upside or the downside, but watch that closely. We're struggling an awful lot with momentum, and you can really see that when you start looking at some of those index charts. And as we rally, noticing that our volumes are not super, super strong. There's a kind of an equal weighting in the buying and selling here um, as we continue to chop around. And so that momentum um, is struggling here. That's why we could slip into a bit of a consolidating move out toward um, the trend here in these charts. So certainly have um, a, a rough look at the market here and an uncertain look as we continue to progress forward um, with these geopolitical tensions um, in the world. Let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. Now, we have some stuff in here that could certainly fire up could certainly fire up uncertainty today and um, fire up volatility. Um, we're going to start off today. We've got OPEC meeting going on today, motor vehicle sales going on today. We're going to get those mortgage applications here, and those have been in pretty sharp decline here recently. And then we're going to get that ADP report, uh, private payrolls report this morning. That'll be kind of interesting to see if the pressures in the market are starting to affect job growth. We'll want to watch that closely. And then keep in mind, we've got a couple of Fed speakers, our, our most hawkish um, Fed member out there, James Bullard, pushing for a 1% increase in the market or in rates. And um, then we're going to have probably the biggest uh, chance for volatility of the day. And that's where uh, Jerome Powell will ha be testifying uh, for two days in Congress. And you've got to imagine there's going to be an awful lot of questions. Um, members of Congress are looking for re-election, obviously, and um, inflation is hurting them terribly. So there are probably going to be a lot of questions. And Jerome Powell is going to be tiptoeing through a minefield wearing magnetic shoes today. He's got a major task ahead of him to continue to look hawkish on um on inflation and hold up the credibility of the FOMC while at the same time trying to navigate these geopolitical events that could bring the market to its knees if he's not careful. So um, tough task today uh, for Jerome Powell. I would not want to be in those magnetic shoes today. Let's take a look. We've also got petroleum status numbers. Now that could be interesting today just because of the high prices uh, that petroleum is running out. Will we see a a surprise decline in supplies or a surprise, surprise increase in supplies. Um, I don't know, but that could certainly affect how oil reacts for the remainder of the day. And then Beige Book later on this afternoon. Keep in mind as you're planning forward, more Powell testimony. Um, on Thursday, we have jobless claims that will be coming in here, productivity and cost, factory orders, ISM, um, services index, natural gas report. And then the big one for the week is going to be that employment situation number Friday morning before the bell. So make sure you're planning carefully as you head in toward that Friday 
um, report. Let's take a look at our earnings calendar today. Now our earnings calendar pulled back just a little bit, not quite as many companies today, just short of 150 companies reporting. So we're getting a little bit, just a little tiny relaxation in that. It'll step back up tomorrow though, unfortunately. Um, let's take a look at some of the notables here for today. And keep in mind guys that you may have to, if you want to see all of the notables, make sure you click the link below the title of the video. That'll take you back to the morning blog where you can get that full list of notables. Starting off, we're going to have quite a little bit of retail this morning. Um, uh, DLTR, Dollar Tree, will be reporting. Looks like we're getting a little back and forth in Dollar Tree here in the pre-market. We've got um, Abercrombie reporting. Looks like they have disappointed here. And we're going to hear from AEO uh, today. Day. So keep an eye on that. We're also going to get reports from um, Box. That'll be an interesting report today. Keep an eye on that. We're going to hear from RSI today. We'll also um, hear from SPLK. We've got reports from WMC and VEEV on that list today. Now, if you want to, again, catch that full list, make sure you go back and click the link on the blog. What you're going to notice is that we're kind of running out of those earnings reports that move the market dramatically. Um, uh, those big name reports have kind of passed. And so um, earnings may not be as effective in um, providing lots of price movement in the market, particularly with the uncertainty that we see geopolitically. Let's take a look at some stocks that could be setting up. But before we do that, guys, if you do me a quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so you'll be notified every time I post a video. And if you feel these videos are worthy, if this helps you in planning your day, if you could please do me a favor, click that thumbs up button, also leave a brief comment. And for those of you that continue to support the channel through Buy Me A Coffee link, I do truly, truly appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Um, be watchful for um, a, a live event coming up here relatively soon. But I do have to tell you guys today, I, I have to leave early today um, to go visit a doctor and get a bunch of, bunch of blood tests and things done today. So um, and just keep in mind, I may not be able to answer your comments um, quickly um, or as quickly as I normally try to do. So, um, uh, but please, if you continue to um, uh, put those comments in. It helps the channel to continue to grow, and I thank you so much for that. Let's take a look at um, some of these stocks that could be setting up, and I will caution you, because of the wild volatility of this market, it is still very, very dangerous to be thinking too much about buying a lot of positions um, in the market. So just be very, very cautious. Make sure you're planning your trades carefully, and remember, there's really no reason at all to be blindly following anyone else's trade ideas. These are just a suggestion, something for your watch list to take a look at. First off, let me talk about Altria here just a little bit. Defensive sector stocks, um, several of them are holding up pretty well. Take a look at Mo here, and this is something that I picked up, and I picked this up based on a weekly chart. So I'm not pay picking this up on a quick short term uh, move. I'm picking this up for a longer term hold, looking to catch capture some of that dividend yield in the chart and some of the upside growth here. I really like this pattern, breaking the downtrend, holding that as a higher low and um, watching that chart. So if you're looking for a little bit of um, defensive type stocks, you might want to take a look at Mo. Another place you might look in that same sector, take a look at Hershey. Hershey has been holding up really, really well in this market. Despite the market volatility, Hershey is trying to look like it wants to go higher here. So keep an eye on Hershey. We're following this nice little upside trend here in the chart. I think you could also um, keep a close eye on Coca-Cola. Now, I have to tell you, the volatility of the market has been affecting the price action here in Coca-Cola. 
Coca-Cola quite a bit with lots of volatility. But keep an eye on that. Um, if we can find some bullishness in the market, Coke could really pop out of this resistance area and continue to move on higher. Other places to look, you might want to be taking a look at some of the casinos out there. PENN has continued to challenge this little resistance level, my alert here in this chart, and it's trying to come a little bit bullish. So you might want to watch that closely, and this happens to be one of those rounded bottom breakout patterns. And by the way, this is one of my favorite type of rounded bottom breakout patterns, and that is where we have rested along that 50 Notice that 50-day moving average is starting to turn up and our shorter-term moving averages have crossed through to the upside there, creating that moving average squeeze here in PENN. Keep an eye on that. Um, um, ultimate target up here would be around that 200-day moving average. So PEN starting to look pretty good and shaping up as a potential trade. You might also want to keep an eye on BBBY, Bed Bath & Beyond. Interesting chart in in here where we broke this support in this in this chart broke it back down came all the way back down into here and then just surged strongly back up to the upside now we are still challenged by this price resistance but you can see there's just that hint of a little bit of bullishness like we might be trying to push on through in this chart so watch that closely this also is one of those rounded bottom breakout patterns don't don't rule out the possibility that this may have to rest a little bit longer, but keep a close eye on that Bed Bath & Beyond trying to come up and look a little better in the charts. Let's take a look here at um, gold, silver, and um, metals of any kind. GLD, very, very strong here recently, showing lots of upside opportunity. Now, we are seeing bonds pull back substantially, but the uncertainty out there in the market has certainly been bringing these up. Now, we're getting a pullback in gold today, and that shouldn't be a surprise after such a steep rally, and we're challenging these price resistance levels but it is exactly that pullback that makes me interested in gold because if we can rest or pull back into this trend looking for that next opportunity that's where i want to be and even if we have to rest a little bit longer i think as long as we hold up in this area gold could set up um, some opportunities. I'm going to have to say the same about silver. Silver holding up nicely. I would keep an eye on that. And then you could look at some of the miners. Take a look at Newmont. Newmont, nice little upside pattern here in that chart, looking good. Um, uh, Barrick Gold, nice little upside pattern, looking very good. And you're going to see that on um, lots of mining charts and mining um, ETF type charts in the market, all looking pretty darn nice here um, on those trades. So watch those pretty closely. Also, anything in that energy sector has been really strong. Now, un understandably, um, this could have major impacts based on how this advance uh, from Russia and Ukraine continues, but and we could see quite a little bit of volatility in it ahead. But um, anything in energy has been really, really strong. Natural gas has been strong. Those things continue to move higher. Take a look and keep an eye on FCX. FCX has been ripping here to the upside. Needs a little rest, in my opinion, a little consolidation before I would consider an entry. But um, copper, um, aluminum um, on um, Alcoa and steel, um, all have been very, very strong uh, to the upside. Those commodity areas just staying really strong with this un uncertainty that we're seeing in the market. You might also want to be keeping an eye on any of those food-related or ag-related products like um, Mosaic. Mosaic has been very strong. A little rest or pullback sets up an opportunity. CF has been extremely strong, breaking through major levels of resistance. So watch those kind of areas very, very closely because they're I think they still have upside potential. Um, with the uncertainty that we have in the market, it looks like inflation is running hotter and hotter and hotter. 
um, with um, the, the metrics that calculate that inflation. So watch these areas close. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all a great day. I want to wish you great success in your trading. Please keep those folks in Ukraine in mind. Um, obviously, um, you know, we, we, we feel kind of... Uh, put upon because the market is being so volatile and not offering up the kind of returns that you may have, have seen last year. But I got to tell you guys, that is far less important than what is happening over there in the Ukraine. Just put yourself in their shoes. Um, they're not really concerned about the market um, at the moment. So keep those folks in mind with, um, with the danger of this world continuing to escalate to the upside. So everyone have an awesome day and we'll see you right back here bright and early Thursday morning. Wish you all the best.